Hello everyone. Uh, very good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. So welcome to Hyperledger Foundation um, Healthcare Special Interest Group. Uh, this Healthcare Special Interest Group is part of uh, one of the special interest groups in the Hyperledger Foundation. Here, uh, all are welcome. That is our uh, or beetle. That's our motto. All are welcome. There is no partiality in any way, and everyone have equal rights over here. What we are doing in Hyperledger Foundation, we are building a better together. It's an open source community, and we need uh, people like experts, developers, um, like developer advocates, like uh, uh, not from only from computer science, from different fields, different perspective for in their, uh, uh, for interoperability. We need all from all the sectors we need people for building a better together. So there are a multiple ways we can and communicate. There are Discord channels like uh, uh, there are uh, email lists. So I suppose if you uh, have the LFID, Linux Foundation ID, here and you can access all the wiki pages and you can create, uh, actually you can create your own LFID. I will show that in a minute. So here, once you have uh, created and you have, you are starting to contribute to the uh, open source. So we uh, accept, we encourage the thought leadership. Marketing is allowed, like uh, we do as well as we allow, and community building is also happening. And different ways to get involved. So this is about, and I will tell uh, the antitrust policy, like, Whatever we speak here, it is open. It is publicly available. Even this meeting is recorded and the uh, recording will be available in the Hyperledger, um, uh, like especially in the groups that the healthcare uh, ones, um, YouTube um, channel, it will be available. So like, uh, please go through this because like uh, code of conduct is important as well as like, uh, um, Everyone has equal rights as well as we have to respect everyone. So, and this healthcare special interest, see, uh, this is our wiki page, the front page, and how to get your LFID. If you go there, uh, simple steps will be there. You can use your uh, uh, Gmail or your personal mail ID to create your LFID. It is uh, free and it is open for everyone. And uh, email lists are there. You can get into that. So if you go to the uh, general meeting, uh, you can see this 2024 meeting list agenda. So today's meeting agenda, I have posted here. So like, uh, this is what we ask when uh, we start the meeting, if there are new members, we ask them to introduce them uh, quickly. So I, I wish and I like you people to introduce yourself. Can you go ahead one by one, please? Yeah. Hi, Anasuya. Uh, this is uh, Padmaja Joshi from CDAC Mumbai. And uh, we are working in the domain of uh, blockchain quite a bit. And thanks for inviting me over here. Uh, it will be a pleasure contributing to Appalachia Fabric. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And the healthcare group, of course. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. basically applicability of blockchain to healthcare. Yes, thanks. Yes, yes. yes. Thanks, Anasuya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. And this is monthly meetings every uh, month, third Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. IST. So this is our meeting time. It is uh, 3 p.m. EST and uh, 11, uh, I think 11 a.m. GMT. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Akshay, and Akshay is today's uh, special guest. I'm to be the speaker. Uh, he is, uh, I will tell a bit about uh, him and then I will ask him to introduce him. Um, he is a blockchain developer and uh, more than that, he is a content creator. He has, I am fan of his YouTube channel. He, he provides a lot of uh, blockchain ideas and he runs the podcast also with uh, uh, bl blockchain uh, big heads, right? He, he, he <laughs> said it is really nice to listen. Like you people can also go ahead and listen to him. Actually, please introduce yourself. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for such uh, awesome introduction. 
and uh, thanks for walking us through the Apple Ledger Foundation rules and the regulations along with the what special interest to healthcare presidential. So it was, you know, I was connected with Apple Ledger like more than a year. It's uh, obviously always fun and uh, happening while connect with you folks. So today, thanks for, you know, giving me opportunity to speak here about some new project idea of related to, to healthcare domain. So today we're going to speak about blockchain based blood bank network, like topic was already shared. So myself, uh, Akshay Manhar Kurekar, actually I'm doing a full-time blockchain developer job. Along with that, anyhow, somehow I have managed to create content. I have, you know, passion to uh, do some contribution in Happy specifically in private domain, because we have seen the huge gap between public blockchain how run and private blockchain how run. So I just trying to you know fill the gap and educate the people's professionals, developers in terms of uh, Apple Ledger and other Apple Ledger products. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Uh, Harini? Oh, there are many people there. Sorry, I missed you people. I could uh, yeah, yeah, see yeah. only a few in the, on the screen. Yeah, yes. Haridi, please introduce yourself. I think this is the first time for you in this special address group. Yeah, so I'm Shri Haridi. I'm currently a second year uh, undergraduate student pursuing B.Tech computer science with specialization in cybersecurity in uh, Amrita Vishwanath Pitam at Coimbatore. So I got to know this um, webinar through LinkedIn. Welcome, Harini. Like, uh, I wish you will be attending many more meetings and you will be contributing to the open source. All the best. Thank you so much. Uh, Raja, would you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Raja Kedam. I'm based out of Bangalore and I've been focusing on enterprise technology and software. Um, passionate about healthcare. Um, Recent past, I've been working on emerging technologies like uh, IoT, blockchain, and artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, yeah, I look forward to um, be part of this uh, group and uh, contribute as much as I can. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Anastasia. Yeah, welcome. Uh, we have... Uh... Jatin Manoj, uh, is it first time you are attending this meeting? Yes, uh, it is the first time I'm attending this meeting. Okay. okay. I am a third year student uh, pursuing computer science um, based in uh, VIT. Oh. And uh, May I am um, uh, in Vellore. Okay. So, and this is also the uh, first time I'm attending uh, any uh, open source event, uh, event. So, even I'm interested in contributing and exploring it more. I got Very to know good. about via Abhinav Galk, sir. Very good. Very good. Welcome. Welcome. We uh, expect your contributions. Uh, Joshua, is it uh, first time? Yes, this is also my first time. Okay. Um, the is there any chair. of us your uh, ID? Um, no, no, no. Okay. That's all. I'm also in my second year in, in my VTEC. Same as okay. my colleague Harini. Uh, which one? Uh, like Amrita. Yeah, yeah, Amrita. And I was uh, researching on hyperledger when I. Okay. 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 Uh, welcome, uh, Joshua. We expect your uh, contributions. Nirmala. How to pronounce your name, Nirmala? Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. You are audible. Yeah, so I'm uh, located in Mumbai and I'm working in uh, CDAC Mumbai and I'm with Dr. Padmaja Joshi. Wow, wow. 
very good i very thought good. it will okay. be good uh, if we could enhance the network so uh, passing the information about your forum to more people so that That's we can great. have a better That's forum great. lovely yeah. <laughs> yeah very uh, warm welcome so like uh, so like uh, without uh, any any other uh, joiners of here if anyone else have joined, please uh, feel free to unmute and uh, speak. Uh, yeah. So like uh, in this Hyperledger Special Engineers group, there, there are four co-chairs out there. I am one of the co-chair and other people are uh, Abhinav, uh, Ramesh and James Davis. He's a professor from US. So like uh, if you want to announce something else to the group also, feel free to uh, announce you are uh, most welcome. And today's event, like as I mentioned, we have Akshay Manohar Kureshar with us. He's a blockchain developer and content creator. Like he is going to present about blockchain-based blood bank network to us. So like uh, we will finish that and we will get back to the um, further discussions or Q&A, whatever you want to tell. Here, what, what he has given us, like what is the proposed plan for 2024 and like uh, how to improve the uh, participants' uh, involvement and like these are the ones uh, we can further for the discussion. But like I think that can wait. We will go for uh, we'll give the uh, we will give it to like I welcome Akshay to come and give the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Anushya. Thank you so much. Yeah. So let me know once my screen is up. So I will start uh, with the presentation. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. I hope my voice is pretty clear. Yeah, right? you are loud and clear as well as your screen is visible. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. So, hi, Forum. So today uh, we're going to discuss about how can we use uh, blockchain specific to the Hyperledger Hap fabric you know, to enhance our traditional methodology. So now we have blood banks over the globe. Even in India, let's take an example of in India. India have blood banks across the city, multiple places, but in most of the critical situations, when any patients needs blood, they have to struggle most of the time to find the correct uh, blood at right time. So it's I, I find this thing and I find some gap in the current infrastructure. And I thought, let's, you know, fill this gap using our latest tech as a blockchain. So how can we do this thing actually? So here I have one proposal. We can build a blockchain based blood bank network. So it will connect banks in a single network to keep track of all transition at a single point based on their banks. What all transition transactions is happening based on the one bank. So what is the transaction here? Transaction is like who is going to donate a blood, how that blood is like how many blood is connected within a month. This will also get one record. Who is going to buy that particular blood, these things. And what is the, you know, blood, which type of blood group is coming in my bank? What is the intake and output? Like what is uh, in inflow and outflow is happening of the blood within the bank? And most important, who is donating the blood? Because there is a lot of scams and fake things happens, happens in this current uh, infrastructures. So only one person used to give donate the blood multiple times and the uh, the malicious users try to do them so, you know, to increase the record of their blood and they will sell this blood in black market at higher price, not to the normal users. So we can eliminate this complete thing if we implement blockchain-based system. How we can uh, avoid this situation? If we implement the blockchain, we know that blockchain gives us the... Uh, feature of immutability once you entered any record on blockchain it's not going to we cannot remove it we cannot delete it we cannot update it we can update it but it will generate a new record of the same string so we can trace back the updated record as well so in such way we got to know that who is doing what so we can we have the each and every traceability of each and every transition so this will enable the security in our complete system so i have few pointers why should we go with this approach it will remove all fake users from existing systems very first it will remove the malicious users fake intentions fake users and scams and everything 
keep track of blood bank uh, blood donors who is going going to donate the blood and what time so with respect to uh, some health records we have we don't have to donate our blood on regular basis they have a certain timeline and once you are fit then only you have to donate you are not allowed to donate blood more so that is also one thing we can keep a track when this particular individual donated and what is his next turn when is that individual is going to donate so it will reduce the scams give in the most important part of our system this will give incentive to the donor to increase the awareness and to spread the positive vibe in the ecosystem so this incentives in the form of tokens so this will be based on our blockchain network only this once any donor is going to donate a blood in the network so the network will offer them tokens so this token it's now just i'm calling it a token but we can call it as a blood token or let's say any any name of tokens so these tokens user will use this token or, or any donor donor could be a patient at after some time right he might be uh, in, at first month he was donating something but after a few months he might feel sick and he want to buy some medicine so he can use these tokens at any medic uh, medical stores or any healthcare center to buy some medicine so this will help so this is like a some sort of incentive we can give easy access of records we will get records easily because we will try to maintain a one app or websites of all the transactions whatever happening on the ledger so we anyone can check so let's say on administrative level we of course in each and every uh, ecosystem we have separate level or hierarchy and uh, administrative roles to maintain the authenticity and the uh, authenticity and the like to make sure that my system is working smooth or not so we can trace back the records of each and everything there secure transaction because as of as everyone know in blockchain each and every transaction is traceable and it is so super super secure so we cannot uh, mute that particular transaction and quick access of the banks of course when we are using the apps so we can simply check that what is the availability of blood with respect to the uh, blood groups donor donor can use his or uh, like same i already explained this his or her incentives in healthcare centers to buy any medicines or buy any healthcare equipments or we can leverage this particular tokens at multiple places at well not just healthcare we can uh, leverage these things in malls and different places where uh, so this will spread so yeah, the my last point will be the same thing it will build a complete ecosystem to generate tokens and use for all the healthcare related products and services so this is the most uh, like few highlighted points this is not just there is lot more points but this is the high level points we can achieve who what are the stakeholders in my uh, this proposals we have approved blood banks those who can connected on the network and then blood donor patients hospitals and healthcare centers patients who will use the incentives hospitals who will be connected on uh, with the blood banks so to uh, keep the track of blood in in and outflow and along with this healthcare centers where my incentives and the tokens tokenomy will be happen these all stakeholders are like we have to onboard on blockchain networks of course to communicate with each other so now let's uh, deep dive into little technical stuff how my uh, network topology will look like so i have these two icons here like two images one is like uh, this will represent hospital and this will represent a blood bank now uh, we're going to use here hyperledger fabric so this is not limited just with hyperledger fabric we can use some dip- different approaches as well but i try to keep this little bit uh, you know uh, centric towards hyperledger fabric because i have little expertise in hyperledger fabric so i want to uh, present you how can we achieve this scenario using this in hyperle fact we have certain uh, few technical components so very first is ordering service ordering service is used to validate the transition once the transition validated then only we will push those transition our blockchain ledger so we have ordering services we have nodes nodes or we can call it as organization as well so in our case node will be act for a uh, node will be given for hospitals and blood banks why hospitals and blood banks because these entities is a big entity we are this could be the chain of hospital as well let's say aims aims we have in multiple cities so we can give one node to the aims and within one node we have multiple peers 
so multiple peer is like who will going to endorse the transition and verify the transition means whatever the transition is happening in my ledger is it correct or not or who is donating the blood and who is buying my uh, uh, blood and all those things we can validate and if this blood is donated by a hospital or a individual donor these all thing we can track that's why the hospital will play a main role in our complete ecosystem along with the blood bank and most important part of our logic is smart contract smart contract is nothing but the business logic we will write some business logic at the end we have multiple languages we can use a uh, solidity we can use uh, golan we can use javascript java node js there is multiple languages and approaches to write smart contract we in specific to the haplogroup fabric we called it as chain code right so we'll write chain code to create a token and whenever any donor is going to donate a blood based on their amount mostly we follow the standard amount throughout the globe how can how much amount they can uh, donate so we're going to give them incentive so immediately whenever they upload or whenever they update yeah i have donated with the proof uh, on the app so they will receive the incentive from the network itself when i'm calling network so network is like a closed network where we have already the channels and uh, all the participants onboarded there right so they will receive the token and then they can the end users now my end users will donor and patient can use that particular tokens now let's deep dive into this network little bit so in technical terms we have channels high level channels and we have nodes i have already explained the node but let's go with the channel what is channel let's say uh, i want to implement this infrastructure over the india right so india is a huge geographic area so we cannot include the everything at the same location let's say the, what are the constraints here we have some certain language constraints a few follow their own regional language methodology and few follow the english few follow hindi right so we can distribute based on their region in a channel even though they will be in a single network but we can distribute the channels for each other what is channel channel is nothing but the logical separation layer layer within my network so let's say all the communication can be happen within this channel only and uh, this one single node can be a part of multiple channels as well that could be also possible but we follow the standard practices to keep the or uh, to keep the uh, separated users let's say these two hospitals is from delhi so we will try to keep one channel within the haryana and delhi sort of thing and few people's uh, few channels we can keep in like uh, in karnataka state let's say bangalore and mysore so this channel can follow the bangalore mysore network all the blood banks and all the hospitals within the bangalore and mysore can be onboarded over here so this type of uh, topology we can follow i'm just trying to give the uh, example now let's see in real implementation this will look something like this let's say this is my blood banks these red circles and this cubics are my hospitals so the they these all things are going to connect with each other in a decentralized way what is decentralized decentralized means uh in distributed way they are not in one to one relation or one to many relation is not there there is many to many relations so all blood bank is going to connect with the uh, all hospital and all hospital is going to connect with the all blood bank because ultimately these all things are in a network so once you are network means you are connected with everyone that's we that's our how blockchain network works now let's take uh, some realistic example how this scenario is going to happen let's say here is one ls ls is a donor and as ls will download the app register herself and then she will try to donate a blood once the ls do donates the blood she will get the incentives okay once ls get the incentive and now the other person now network has some blood so what bob let's assume bob is a patient so bob can simply check using app only check the records is my blood group like let's say bob has a b positive blood group and he can check yeah this b positive bl blood is available at what or which blood bank and he can buy the blood blood from that itself or if it's on a free basis so this way they can use bob can use the app or blockchain network to get the blood quickly handy within the app itself or we can set up a some delivery point 
let's say a uh, network has the capability to send the delivery or send the uh, blood within the hospital so they can track at which hospital you are admitted or where exactly you are situated situated so they can simply send the blood there itself or if you are near by any blood bank you can collect from there itself so this type of something a uh, business logic or we can say application level things we can manage at any level but now we are trying to focus more on the core part how the blockchain will going to help so once we have all these type of transitions uh, of course we going to generate a token once whenever this donor is going to donate and that token will get in the form of incentive to the ls now uh, ls can use this token at some different places to buy some medicines buy some any equipments or do any let's say for shopping as well let's say if we uh, leverage this tokens and we advertise this particular token and we allow this token to use in some malls or some uh, fancy places as well we can do that as well even though in copy shop or somewhere else so this is how complete uh, ecosystem works so i'll try to you know keep things in simple way so yeah so this is my proposal with respect to blood bank network how it will going to work this to have happy like a fabric open for qa it was really a great one uh, akshay actually thomas joined and just now he left he, how he is here sir uh, thomas are you here okay he left so hmm. he was uh, messaging it's a very good presentation he really enjoyed it actually one query Why yeah, yeah, have you chosen uh, fabric? Yeah, good question. The thing is, why I want to choose because uh, I don't like to add on board each and every entity, and some sometimes we don't have to make this transition public. We need these transitions of yeah, and and sorry, I one thing forgot to mention. Actually, the fabric is our permission blockchain, right? So this transition we don't want to be public for. Let's say I have implement this network in India. I don't want uh, Australian guys to check what is happening in my country, or I don't want any other uh, country people to check the. So it is kind of consortium, data. consortium, consortium, your, uh, yeah, consortium based hmm? architecture, right? That's And why we have ordering service. And any specific uh, uh, consensus algorithm you have chosen? Oh uh, yeah, like I have keep these things very generic. I have not chosen any consensus, but we can use your a uh, raft. What by default we follow in Apple as a fabric. Raft consensus. Okay. Okay. okay thanks. But why why not Ethereum like kind of a thing where you can again have a better control on uh, things. Oh, ah, the reason okay. for not to go with Ethereum in yes. the first choice because there each yeah. and every transition will be my public. So this all my patient okay. data yeah. could yeah. be get public. So maintaining is, consortium. Know, yeah, right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Because he is the patient. Let's say he is my minister who want to use the uh, you know this app. So if yeah. the main ministers reveal that they have a uh, you know main diseases, so other enemies can. Uh, attack on this minister using collecting his health data. So this is you know a very con like a core or we can say a key point to mm -hmm. remember that right? our healthcare data we should not uh, expose directly in the public. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, did you face any kind of performance concern? What is the transaction per second uh, uh, actually uh, taken by your network or uh, kind of what is the concern? Uh, uh, And what should I say? Concurrent. See, no, no. yeah, throughput and uh, the output is like completely fine. I told you there are multiple mechanisms to you know improve the throughput. We can improve those things by using proper tech. Like let's say if you are gonna use Golan uh, throughout your application, Golan programming for chain code or for your SDK as well, and your performance will increase drastically. And it depend on how many VMs or how much resources you are going to allocate. to your nodes and ordering services oh, yes. that's also going to decide your performance but uh, for hsf i have not built this thing completely and i have not tested it so 
This is just a proposal. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Akshay. Nice presentation. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for questions. General doubt. Um, how do you connect a hyperledger to a UI? Like, can you yeah, like connect yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll explain you. There is very straightforward way. Uh, we have Node SDK concept, right? So using Node SDK, we can build APIs of smart contract uh, uh, chain codes. So there is a uh, you know stages. This particular complete infrastructure is get segregated in some stages. Very first, we have network. On behind network here, we have chain codes. Chain codes, chain codes can be used or we can say triggered using uh, Node SDKs. In Node JS, we have we can use Node SDK. Node SDKs allow us to create an API because Node Node itself the REST architecture framework, right? So we can use REST APIs and REST API is simple. So you can using some React JS or some any uh, vanilla JavaScript or Angular, you can simply call those APIs. So you will get all your data in your React application. So this is how we follow the architecture. Oh, where the SDK? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you need any more clarification or? It's fine. I'll look more into it. I'll, you know, thank you. Uh, Aryan, you have some question, right? Can you unmute yourself and ask? Yeah. Hi, Akshay. And uh, first, welcome. We welcome yeah. you. I think this is your first meeting. Yes. Uh, okay, you go thank ahead you. with the question and then we will... Uh, yeah. Ask you yeah, I, I thought like actually we are already explained it like we since we are going in a permission model. So yeah, there is no concept of getting a confidential data out. So yeah, I think it's answered. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And but, but one more question I have, like how, uh, how logical it is from a business perspective to get it implemented plus like how many key holders or stakeholders that gonna be the part of the complete ecosystem. Yeah, thanks for this question. So uh, we have this much uh, stakeholders in this complete ecosystem, let's say the blood bank, the donor, patients, hospitals, and healthcare centers. So these all, I think you connected a little late. I don't know, but I have already explained this thing. Like we have up blood banks who will go into the, of course, play a main role. And donor will be donor and patient will be my end users. Hospitals and healthcare centers will be my nodes who are going to generator tokens and these guys are gonna use the tokens to run the tokenomy and uh, these token can be uh, used throughout the hospital chains in the network to avail the medical yes. facilities later on yes 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 okay yes mm -hmm. so uh, we assume that these all entities are uh, you know gonna be in a single network so they have access to their one single tokens so they can uh -huh. share among themselves yeah okay understood yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Akshay. It was a, a great presentation. Uh, and uh, I have a question. Very promising. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I think someone has a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah Raja, you I'm can sorry. go ahead, please. Uh, this is Raja here. Akshay, a great presentation. Um, I have a question uh, on the incentive uh, system part. So, mm -hmm. uh, any reason why we have put the incentive system outside the blockchain network? Or, like, are you going to, uh, are the incentive? For instance, if the incentives are time sensitive, right? Like they're going to lapse in. Uh, no, no, I, months, this is not outside months, the. No, no, uh, it's not outside the blockchain. Uh, whenever we hold any asset that will rely in my wallet, but ultimately when you have to use it, you have to use it within the eco blockchain ecosystem only. Just to represent that this is my app and that incentives or token is going to store in your wallet. That's what I'm trying to represent here. But uh, whatever the stuff, whatever the tokens, let's say in Hyperledger, using Hyperledger Fabric also, I can generate my ERC tokens or NFTs, something like that. So that token we have to hold where, hold in some wallet. So I'm just trying to depict this wallet over here. But uh, ultimately, it will be used in blockchain ecosystem only. And the second question, I think the okay, part yeah. of your question is Binance and those stuff. This is, so, this is completely private blockchain. So... We have to then build interoperability between the private blockchain and then public blockchain to use the same kind of token. And then it's a completely different use case. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
Hello. Thanks, sir. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, sorry, your voice is little breaking. Hello. Nirmala. Yeah. I, yeah, I have a question. Like, like uh, when you are saying that the token can be used for uh, uh, buying some. Hello. Am I audible now? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah so audible, when you are saying that that token can be used for uh, um, medical things, uh, that should be done within network also medical shops. Yeah. Right. Or it can be utilized for buying from, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the shops which are outside of this network. Uh -huh. If yes, then any... uh, what yeah. provision? Yeah, we can use anywhere. Just we have primary requirement. Whatever the entity we are using, let's say we are using it at many medical store or any uh, fashion shop. So that shop or store should be connected to my blockchain network. Then only it will going to work. If those are not connected with, it, with my network. Yeah, that then is, it should be within that work. network only. Yeah, within yeah. that network only, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Very yeah. well explained, John. Uh, yeah, I have one more add up, add up question to it. Yeah. Uh, let's mm -hmm. say if we are getting some another shop uh, binding with us, let's say I am a fashion owner mm -hmm. and uh, you are using the same token to buy some things from me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But somewhere I am putting up the real asset, uh, the mm -hmm. real world currency to buy all those stuff uh, mm -hmm. Let's say if it's a piece of clothing or something. So it's mm -hmm. I'm getting source with a big currency like USD or something. So mm -hmm. how can a vendor will cash out or turn those money back into it? So it's something like hospital or the uh, owner will give back the real asset to it or it will like, I mean, how it will work. Yeah. Thanks for this great question. So it's simple. Now we have one token. This token has an actual value, right? Let's assume, let's assume, uh, we let's for now call whatever the token we are generating in our ecosystem, let's call it as blood token. Okay. So let's assume Alice has 10 blood tokens and each worth the value of uh, 10 rupees. So now Alice has hundred rupees. So simply it's, this could be a possible, they went at any medical shop and they said, I want hundred rupees that to the shop owner. I can give you a 10, 10 blood token. Can you please give me 100 rupees for now? I don't want to buy any medicine. Just I want the cash out of it. So Alice can simply send 10 blood tokens to that medical store person and she can get the 100 rupees in cash. So same funda can be applicable at any places, be it hospital, be it blood bank, anywhere. I hope uh, I answered your question. Yeah, so it means we need to bring in some liquidity into yeah. the pool. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's it's completely a business use case. How exactly you want to use this token and what is your tokenomy? So what is my proposal was it's like basic. How first you generate a token. This is very important in ecosystem. How you are generating a token. We have a very great, you know, functionality to generate token. Once you have a generate token and how you are using it, that then it's a hundred of ways to use the token, right? First, what matters most, how you are generating the token in your ecosystem. So we are generating by donating. If someone you are donating, then it's get automatically generated and get incentivized. And then you can use it in multiple ways. You can give the pool, stake, you can stake it and do multiple things. Even this token can fluctuate that value based on the you know usage and popularity of this network. This could be also possible. Understood, understood. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. Yeah, Akshay, once again, uh, thank you very much. And uh, we have like, um, uh, like Aryan, you have joined for the first time, right? Yeah, it's my first okay, time. Okay, okay. So actually, I suppose you missed the introductory part. So what we do uh, is like we ask uh, people to introduce yourself. So oh, okay. I have uh, just started your name. And you will be like, you can... Uh, find this in the Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group mm -hmm. uh, meetings. There, okay. like if you go to the 2024 meetings, today okay. will be available. So, uh -huh. and in the uh, main link, like okay. I will share this link in the chat box with everyone. So you can see how to create your uh, LFID also. Okay. I request everyone, uh, please generate your LFID Linux Foundation ID. It's a free one. And uh, once you have this ID, 
you can start contributing to the open source, like especially uh, Linux related on the projects. So we can, and please introduce about yourself. Oh, yeah. So hi, everyone. I'm Aryan. Uh, I'm a third year student of a BTEC, currently interning with a company in a Web3 space. So I just heard about the Akshay Vyas conversation. Uh, he invited me to join this podcast, this series to actually gain some the application based knowledge. And it's very wonderful, like how people actually uh, depict here key how you do a real life thing instead of just making some project, but how to add a real life value. Yeah. So once again, thank you so much, Akshay Vyas, for giving us such great knowledge about and it. It's a very may crucial I know thing. your uh, college name? Uh, so I'm from Atria University. It's in Bangalore. Which one? Atria University. Can you spell it, please? A T R I A. A T R I A University. Uh, university, yeah. Uh, from where? Uh, Bangalore. Bangalore. Yeah, Bangalore itself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we guys are co-workers. I mean, colleagues, Akshay and me. So yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> Okay, so you are an intern in the same company, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, that's good. Uh -huh. um, and we have uh, Professor Ramadru with okay. uh -huh. Um. So, uh, Ram Professor Ramadru, can you unmute and introduce about yourself? Yeah, so good evening, ma'am. Sorry, I hear. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. It's heavy coming. rain there. I can understand. Yeah. So, so good evening, all. I'm uh, Ramaguru. I am working as an assistant professor in uh, Amrita Vishwavidhi Pidam Coimbatore uh, campus. Uh, and I am working on blockchain from 2017-18. And I'm also uh, teaching blockchain for... Uh, so far, I was teaching blockchain for M-Tech cybersecurity students. And uh, and I have uh, some uh, students from Amrita at BTEC level working in blockchain projects. I think two of my students are here. I think uh, Joshua and uh, Harini are here. And I have another 15 to 20 students who are actively learning, though they are from second year BTEC cybersecurity. They already have a good exposure compared to um, similar uh, uh, undergraduate students. So we are on a journey in exploring and uh, no, uh, experimenting and figuring out uh, no, how, how to use blockchain for socio-economic uh, uh, use cases. So that's where no, initially, at, as an university, we were focusing on uh, Ethereum and we were trying to create our own uh, blockchain with a, collaborating with a company in Hyderabad. But now, um, you know, we are slowly moving towards uh, uh, exploring Hyperledger. Uh, which we started only uh, just a year ago. So now we are trying to, you know, I've divided my students team into different uh, uh, blocks where each of uh, set of students are focusing on different uh, blockchain, uh, like uh, Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Aries, whatnot, whatever is there we are exploring. So that's the quick background of what I am doing and what we are doing at Amrita uh, University. Yeah. And happy to be here in uh, healthcare uh, special interest uh, uh, group. Um, thanks to ma'am for uh, the invite. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. And I think I missed your session, but anyway, I think I'll watch the uh, video, the recorded session. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, Dr. Ramakuru. And uh, I, I wish to announce to everyone that next month, in our next month meeting, uh, Dr. Ramakuru will be the uh, Yes, present, presenter. He will be presenting a topic related to uh, healthcare. Uh, and the meeting will be on 19th of June. So, this uh, monthly meetings. So, every month, third Wednesday, uh, 8 30 p.m. IST. So, that is 3 p.m. GMT and 11 a.m. EST. So, I I hope like you people will remember and they will be continue attending the meetings. Yeah, sure, sure. We're looking forward for such amazing meeting. And uh, here are a few like uh, proposals.
Christmas plans for 2024. Like uh, the very first thing is the regular conduct of the meetings and the meeting link that is also given here. That is uh, repeating meetings. And uh, we have a LinkedIn page. So please go through this. And we are planning for this uh, healthcare special interest group blog. So if there are bloggers over here, if you wish to contribute, please do. And uh, <sighs> please come out with a ebook also, like and collaborative projects. If uh, developer advocates are there, developers are uh, ready to spend some time, we can go ahead and create some projects. Uh, and sure. see, uh, this is today I am very happy because we have uh, kind of household uh, attendance thanks to actually, especially <laughs> for the no, presentation. It's, it's and uh, you pulled a lot of people, I suppose. And thanks to uh, Professor uh, Ramaguru, he has asked his students to come. And we had Dr. Padnaja and uh, colleague. So, like, it's a it's totally it's and uh, Raja Hidden is uh, here. He is one of my uh, batchmates, you can tell. We, we did this IoT course together <laughs> from IAAC. So, like, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, for, like, for improving, if you have any ideas, please go ahead. Like, for improving the what we can do to increase the strength. Because this is going to be a once a month meeting. So we need a little bit of planning also. We are not meeting offline or anywhere, anytime. And uh, we have the email uh, uh, list. So through email, we can contact. That is one good thing we have. And uh, I'm not very sure whether everyone is very active on the Discord. But email, I suppose it will be recorded also. Like we can have uh, uh, discussions over there. And that all the members will be able to uh, get what is happening also. And uh, how we can improve the participation. Like if you have any uh, ideas, please share. No, I think idea is only one. Like we can conduct these type of sessions, what we had now. We already had the plan, right? So whenever, because this will be little valuable and productive as well. So whenever any joining is joining the sessions, they will get some valuable inputs. So this will encourage some other peers and other students or learners or enthusiasts to contribute in this particular special interest group from their front as well. So this will keep uh, engaging everyone. An email list is the primary uh, uh, source of communication we can consider or Discord, I think, somehow. But yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. So if, if you want to add uh, any more points, feel free to come to this page. Add. Mm -hmm. So it will be showing at the bottom of page who has edited that and uh, who has contributed that. Your contribution will be recorded over here also. Okay. And uh, like as uh, regular uh, attendees, only we two are there. But uh, I'm very happy there are a lot of new faces today. So, thank you. Thank you, everyone. If you uh, like, uh, if you want to say something, we can continue. Or if there is nothing, we can conclude today's yeah. meeting. Ma'am, can I add quickly uh, something? Uh, uh, just a thought. I do not know how it works. Uh, I do not know. Will it work here? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, we have already, you know, we are, uh, so as part of Hyperledger India student chapter, uh, we are uh, you know, planning to uh, maybe more uh, student clubs across different colleges. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, from each of those colleges, not everyone would be interested in healthcare use case, but at least we can um, uh, find out to who are those students or the faculties who are interested in this healthcare. We can invite them uh, to any of these sessions like this. Post which, what we can do is we can, uh, uh, because we cannot read all the existing blogs or research papers that are available related to healthcare or those things. So we can uh, maybe say, for example, we are starting from June. Uh, let us uh, um, target a few students. Let, let us take, uh, for example, let me take Harini and Joshua. We can give both of them a research paper, ask them to read, 
and maybe give a write up or a presentation on that they need not present it but we can uh, those people can write it as a blog as a students it will be valuable for them also to showcase in their resume or something like that and we will also have enough blog posts coming up from them so in a month even from three colleges we get uh, two students which means six students and in a month if you are there at least all the three people three teams are trying even if one team turns out to be uh, successful we will get one or article per month and even if we are getting more we can have it as a backup and we can publish two article per month that way i think the blog will also be i think uh, active and we will also be learning uh, from pure research paper even if there is something that is not clear we can still go back to the research paper and we can uh, learn i think that could be one uh, thing and maybe at end of a month maybe at end of a year like say december 2024 we can have our mini ideation session Uh, with all these uh, stakeholders and we can come up with uh, some list of problem statements maybe that problem statement itself we can now use it for the collaborative projects now since the discussion happened between all the stakeholders all of us are like in a way you know equally contributing to the uh, idea and maybe that could uh, each student team or each whoever wishes can take up one project and they can start working on the project and since it, the idea itself was created here i think people will be clear we need not explain what is the background of the project why the project was created all those things we need not explain it to any one of them because we created the problem statement i think that way we can keep the students engaging also and the ebook or the blog or the collaborative project those three checklists will also be in some way addressed Yes, I think it's a good idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> I yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, great. Idea. Yeah, even I want to add up something like. Yes, like, please. Yeah, so yeah, I am also working on a bachelor thesis. Uh, so I I also look out for such things where I could like get to learn about all these things. So we can all actually host a few like let's say open house chats. there there is no fixed agenda like there will be some basic agenda that need to be fixed up where we can actually discuss what all we are doing like professor said uh, he is working in some kind of climate tech or sustainable tech so uh, it's a place where we can actually exchange the ideas instead of like presenting them or just a like overview where we can actually exchange ideas over the things what we are doing and how we can connect and collaborate and how to build up these student communities and how can we set up a framework let's say if i want to start up some blockchain uh, group in my university so how can we do it these are the small small things where we can target students to actually motivate them to start up something new uh, if we give them a chance to speak up what they are doing it will be very motivating for them uh, aryan uh, yes yeah that's a good good idea but actually we are already following few things what you have already mentioned we have weekly connect apple again okay. they connect right and shamit okay so we are we have we usually connect but for long i skip that but <laughs> i think it's still ongoing right anusha ma'am like schedule is changed but yeah uh, yeah there is like, uh, hyperledger, uh, hyperledger india chapter we have yeah, weekly connect he is from bangkok right yeah so he he uh, belong to that bangkok regional chapter okay but he is uh, you are very welcome to join india chapter meetings in hey, any he's meeting from... because it is open for any everyone it is <laughs> open for everyone so uh, every thursday is 4 pm is okay that is the 4 time PM. like 4 to 5 pm ist this is the time like uh, hyperledger mm-hmm. india chapter uh, uh, meetings weekly meetings are happening uh-huh. so speak, uh huh um mostly the uh, discussions everything like uh, will be happening there and we uh, like uh, especially i invite like if you people are interested see i was uh, with what uh, aryan and uh, ramaguru has told like if if we get volunteers uh, say like one or two people who can uh, connect with the um uh colleges and uh, find like uh, one or two people like just like uh, we have the student uh, society uh, in hyperledger india chapter like that some student connect we can have like uh, in healthcare uh, special interest group also under it also 
So, what do you people say? Yeah, yes, what's uh, And uh, uh, I think even like uh, giving example of my journey, like my, I got introduced to blockchain, by, like, that is one example I can give of mm -hmm. how it can be helpful. I joined blockchain because of we had a club in our college where we would do project cycles as a uh, server was saying earlier. So we had this concept of project cycles where we will ask people for different ideas and uh, the seniors, they'll shortlist it for us. So they shortlisted and I, 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 I didn't know much about the project. I just joined it. It turned out to be a blockchain project and I started contributing to it and I learned it on my own. So it is helpful. And uh, even otherwise, like uh, there are new societies coming up in college, like the blockchain community was very recently started. It is only like one year old in my college. Yeah. So if it is like, I can see if I can pitch them to make a, a separate department for Hyperledger or uh, something like that. Uh, that 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 is one way I feel that maybe Hyperledger and uh, and using blockchain can be. Uh, in, in, there can be increased awareness about it. Yeah, actually, Jatin, yeah. you are in VIT Vellore, right? So yes, like, ma'am. Uh, you can connect with the faculty there. They are actually planning to start Hyperledger India chapter student society in your college. So oh, all the Indian universities, like you can uh, create, you have to uh, write to the India chapter. Like uh, I am actually one of the uh, co-chair for the student societies also, Hyperledger India chapter student society. So like yes. uh, you can connect with me also. Uh, we can uh, talk with the faculty because they had the plans. Probably the, as the exams or something going on, it is getting delayed. So mom. we can start that. Okay. Wow, I didn't know about this. Yes, mom. Yeah, actually, I was trying to mention this thing only earlier. But, <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like we have already what these guys mentioned to you know set up the societies and all. We have all this thing in pipeline. We are doing this thing. Right? Yes, we yeah we are already <laughs> doing it. Yes. It is from yes. I think from most of the onwards, like, few, it is up and running. Yeah, a few colleges from Bangalore and some uh, side of I think from yeah, Pune. Uh, it's I already think set up. Around right? nine or thirteen colleges have already uh, joined. Uh, they have the society clubs. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. And even Amrita, uh, Coimbatore, uh, uh, Professor Ramagru is the one who is taking care. Like, uh, official inauguration has not yet been done, but he is taking care of all the activities. Because I was little down, uh, so I couldn't uh, actively enroll. So now, like, we are uh, back. We will be doing it again. So, like, uh, anything else you people want to share? Yeah, just just one thing. Thanks for asking this question. Yeah. Uh, just so, as in the uh, beginning, Anusha Ma mentioned, I have my YouTube channel as well. So my most of the content, you know, around the Hyperledger uh, and Hyperledger other products, along with the complete private blockchain. So feel free to check out my channel. I'm just posting this link on the chat. And yeah, so we have podcast recently. I started podcast as well. So I had a few podcast with Kamlesh. Uh, Saranch and Deepak Bhatta sir. So he's from Nepal, Kathmandu. So there is some different and there are so many good podcasts coming in the future. So you can subscribe to my channel and share these uh, things with your faculties and friends. This will be, you know, little uh, spread the awareness within the community. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, that's great, uh, Akshay. And uh, once again, thank you everyone. Like, uh... Thank you for attending and uh, you are all very good participants. Like you really enjoyed, I suppose, because you are asking a lot of questions. I hope in the forthcoming week, uh, months also, we will be able to do this in the same way. And uh, once again, let me show you like uh, Hyperledger general meetings. There is the link to get your LFID and email list is there, get involved, and you will be getting all the updates through mail. And you can also see here, uh, today's meeting is listed over here, the fifth, sorry, fourth meeting in this year, okay? Yeah, thank you, ma'am, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining. Have a good day, good night. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone, bye.
Bye.